Hey everyone, today we're going to compare two images taken by two different neutral density filters. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so welcome back to another episode here of BradKPhoto.com. I'm Bradley. Find me on Twitter at BradKPhoto. So today we're going to look at two images taken with different neutral density filters. The first one comes from Brian, who submitted this image to me. He shot it with a Hoya ND400. The other image comes from myself, and I shot it with my SRB Photographic ND1000. So let's get into it. As you can see here on the screen, I have the before photo and the after photo of each image. Before photo for Brian is pretty cold right out of camera. Uh, he shoots with a Sony full-framed camera. I shoot with a crop sensor with the Nikon D7000, um, but really the sensors aren't totally different other than their size because Sony makes the sensors for, for, for Nikon. So what you can see here, he had to warm it up quite a bit to get the white balance right back to where it should be. Uh, for me, on the other hand, it's kind of warm actually, and I know I said in the other video that my, sen that my, my neutral density filter is very neutral, and it is. However, lighting conditions on the day actually affect the neutral density filter's white balance. So when I first started shooting with my neutral density filter, I was shooting in overcast skies. And it was like a big giant soft box of light. Now here I was shooting with blue skies. There was no, not a cloud in the sky where I was. So the color and the time of the day and the harsh light actually warmed up my white balance. Both of these things can be fixed real quick and real easy. So let me start with Brian's image. It's a little on the underexposed side here, and I can only imagine he did that so he didn't blow out the sky, because he was doing a 30 second exposure at f13 at 28 millimeters. So he could have gotten a longer exposure if he had dropped his ISO down to 100 versus 400. He probably could have gotten about another second or two out of that shot. So right off the bat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and bring up the exposure just so you guys can get a little bit more of the detail. And I'm going to go ahead and pull down the highlights, bring back that sky. Now, I'm not going to edit his image. I just wanted to show you guys the details in this. It's pretty cold, but if you were to zoom in, this image is very sharp. So what we can do is we can actually go ahead and just change the white balance pretty quick and simple and get it right to where it would, we would want it to be. Not a whole lot of work would need to go into it. And if you push it too far, it's not a big deal. You can bring it back at any time. That's the, that's the magic of shooting raw, right? You can take your image, edit it, and if you don't like what you're doing, you can simply fix it. Non-destructive editing of a raw photo is the best way to go about it. So I'm still not 100% on that white balance, so I'm going to cool it off just a touch. There we go. That looks pretty good right there on the white balance. And as you can see, it took me, what, 45 seconds to get there, if that? Not a big deal. Um, let's go ahead and look at the image that came out of my camera. So you can see here it's pretty pretty warm. Not too bad though. Um, I shot this at 20 seconds. ISO 100 at 24 millimeters and I believe I shot this at f16. Um, the lens I use is an old film lens so it doesn't have any contacts so my camera can't pick up what the uh, model and the f-stop is. So I'm just going to tell you that's what it was. And like I said, middle of the day, I shot this about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, harsh sunlight. You can, I mean, you can look at that shadow and just see how strong that shadow was. There wasn't any cloud play. Beautiful, beautiful day. And it's really quite simple to adjust this white balance. All I would do is slide it colder. But actually, I like the, the way the warmth is with the wood because the wood was actually pretty bleached out from years and years of being hit by the sunlight. So I actually kind of like the warmth where it is. Now, real quick, what I want to talk about is a reason that these filters may have such a different in white balance is the, the way that they were made, but also the sensors of the camera, each camera has different sensors. So a Nikon D7000 will have a different sensor in it than the Nikon D7100. Same thing goes for Sony. Even though Sony makes the sensor for the Nikon, they're not the same sensors in the camera. So when light's hitting these sensors, their color spaces are different. So not only do you have the filter itself that can change the color, but then the way the light is hitting it through the filter slightly changes it when it hits the sensor. 
A lot of this isn't a big deal as long as it's not a color cast. So far, neither one of these has shown a color cast. And really, if I wanted to, I could just simply cool off this image a little bit, and then it would look a lot better. Um, now, let's go ahead and take a look at the final products so that you can see exactly what you can do using these neutral density filters in post-processing. So here we have Brian's final pro process, and I love the white balance on it. He warmed up the sky a little bit, which, you know what, I don't have any issue if you want to warm up the sky if it looked too cold. If it adds and enhances your photo, I'm all for it. If it looks fake and phony, then I would say leave it alone. But for him, this looks like a sunset photo. I know he shot it at sunset because he told me. So to me, this image works really well. Good job, Brian. Getting back into my final image, I really wanted to play up the blue in the sky and really saturate it a lot. So as you can see here, I saturated out my blue. Also, white balanced properly the water and left a nice warm hue on the sand and on the wood. Um, so there you go. There you have it. Two different filters, two great images. The only real major difference is the price. The Hoya is a little bit more expensive than the one I shot with. Pick or choose, folks. It's, it's not a big deal. It's not a big difference. I know there are some other filters on the market that might throw a color cast at you, especially the Koken filters, but they're really great if you're just starting out. Next time I see you guys, we'll be out on location doing a tutorial on how to take a photo using an ND1000 10-stop neutral density filter. Until then, thank you for stopping by, and I'll catch you guys next time.